In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress in River State says it will not watch a judge allegedly violate the principles of law, even as it plans to petition the National Judicial Council if they issue ex parte order restraining Martins, Mewle and Dumle Mal from being Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the State House of Assembly is not reversed. Chairman of the APC Kertika Committee in River State, Tony Okocha, says that the move is an abuse of court process. He alleged that the idea is to allow Governor Fubara to present the 2024 budget to the Assembly, while also saying that only four members of the Assembly can not seat over a 32-member Assembly with 27 as APC members. He says the APC will petition the National Judicial Council if Justice M.W. Danagogo does not reverse the ex parte order. It is no news that yesterday, 27 River State House of Assembly members who were elected under the PDP platform cross-capitated to the All Progressives Congress. It is the palpable fear of that irreparable loss and the concomitant churnout that has led to the procurement of an ex parte order from the Court of Justice Danagogo, who is younger brother, I emphasize, Justice Danagogo is younger brother to Dr. Tammy Danagogo, who serves in government, River State government, as Secretary to State Government. It is preposterous that Justice Danagogo could berate the NJC who had decided against the granting of frivolous, frivolous S party, we shall be left with no option than to petition to the NJC if the judge does not reverse himself immediately. Finally, it is our counsel to the governor of River State that you refrain from any action that may escalate the political tension orchestrated by his party, the PDP in River State. Well, for more on these uh, stories, I'm joined by Arise Politics editor Somna Sam. Good to see you again. And uh, quite a, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a, a basket of issues coming from uh, two of these states. But first, uh, let's take off uh, that of uh, Ondo State. We had that discussion yesterday, uh, where we also noted, uh, you noted that uh, the uh, governor, the alien governor of Ondo State, was uh, uh, the protagonist pushing for. Uh, what's uh, right to be done at that point in time when uh, Nigeria's uh, late president, Yerado, was ill. Now, let us in on the development now. Uh, it doesn't seem as if there's the letter uh, ready yet. Yes, uh, from the statement issued by the uh, governor's uh, spokesperson, the letter will be formally made available to the State House of Assembly tomorrow and that the transfer of power actually takes effect from tomorrow, uh, that's Wednesday. Uh, December 13th. And I mean, this is the right thing to do. We've seen the governor doing this previously. I think sometime around 2020, 2021. Uh, no, I think 2021, 2022, uh, even up until 2023 now. This should be the fifth time that the governor is doing that. Uh, so it's nothing new to the people of Ondo State. And we must really commend the uh, Governor Rutimi Akiri Dulu for having had this tradition, just like Nasser Erufa, of uh, a former governor of Kaduna State used to do. I mean, when you're going, if, for example, the deputy governor is not available, you transfer power to the speaker. These are the procedures, and it makes governance easy. It doesn't make uh, all these political uh, issues to be you know, brought to the front burner. Instead, you elevate governance to be at the front burner. So uh, we've had issues related to the f alleged forgery of the signature of the ailing governor. Uh, a commissioner came on air to actually say that. And if that is the case that's ongoing, you will remember that this will almost look like what happened during uh, late President yeah. Gerard Dua too. And so these are the kind of situations you see when the constitutional provisions are not followed, when the rule of law is not followed. And having been a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, the uh, expectations have been very high that he will do the right thing. And it's good to know that he's been courageous enough to do the right thing. And the family members who uh, have been by his side have helped him, though we hear that some of them are really not happy. Uh, but nonetheless, everyone is prayerful for Akiri Dulu. If he does the right thing, goes for treatment, gets proper treatment, and it's okay. I mean, he'll come back. Uh, but of course, the desire of some people within his political circle to actually push aside 
uh, lucky I that you are the deputy governor. From being the acting governor is something that, I mean, nobody will accept that. But going forward, when the letter is eventually received, the State House of Assembly should ensure that the needful is done. And like President Bola Tinubu had cautioned them, the, uh, uh, act, the deputy governor, when he assumes power as acting governor, should be careful not to uh, restructure the system of government so much by sacking commissioners, being vindictive and all of that. If he does, he may have a political crisis at hand that he won't be able to uh, 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 you know, contain. And of course, there may be a larger problem for everyone. Well, before we go to the southern part of Nigeria, that is Riva State specifically, let's uh, take this one uh, uh, before we leave. Assuming without considering uh, the ailment is so bad that he cannot append his signature, I would look into having another doctrine of necessity to actually bring uh, the governor on seat because the, the letter must be transmitted tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and it must also carry the signature of the governor. Well, we've been told that everything has been done by his spokesperson. It's just the transmission that's left. So let's just leave it at that <laughs> because, I mean, if that happens, of course, we'll have a situation at hand. But I can tell you that the laws are... Uh, uh, we have enough laws to be able to take care of this situation. And President Tinubu, I mean, I must really commend his political sagacity on this issue. The only area I disagreed with President Tinubu was when he was said to have told the uh, 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 deputy governor to sign a resignation letter that he wouldn't tamper with the commissioners, he wouldn't tamper with the Speaker of the House of Assembly, he will ensure that all structures are remaining uh, uh, he, when he assumes the acting governorship. I don't think that is acceptable in a democracy. Uh, you allow the system to go on with, because it may look like the governor, the deputy governor who will now be the acting governor signed that under threat. But well, these are allegations that we were told that President Tinubu said. So we haven't seen that, and President okay. Tinubu didn't announce, uh, but we just hope that the deputy governor, when he becomes the acting governor, will not be put under undue pressure. Because if not, he will have to react to. So help us make sense of uh, the developments in Rivers. Uh, uh, just uh, less than 24 hours, another video uh, you know, from the archives <laughs> of the <laughs> FCT minister speaking categorically to the section 109 of our constitution uh, is making the rounds, where he specifically said if you vacate uh, you know, you cross the carpet, uh, you must as well vacate uh, that position. So what exactly is happening now? History coming back to remind uh, the uh, FCT minister and every Nigerian. Yes, uh, let's just go down to the issues at stake. The issues at stake is that there's a substantive ex parte order. Uh, that is an interlocutory injunction from a court of law. The River State uh, uh, Court, uh, State High Court, saying that... Uh, the speaker from the faction of, that's loyal to uh, uh, Minister of FCT, Nyesom Wiki, that's uh, Amefili, uh, Amewili, that he should not exercise his rights as a speaker by using the uh, uh, what's called State House of Assembly complex. Instead, Edison Ehie, who is the speaker that's leading four man member of the State House of Assembly, is the one that's recognized as the speaker. So he has four uh, uh, PDP members alongside uh, an LP member that's loyal to him as the speaker. So he's been recognized as the speaker now and he can go ahead and exercise the powers of his speaker. So what the court order says is that the other faction has not been recognized as duly having a speaker. Now, the APC now, led by Tony Okocha, who is the acting caretaker committee chairman of the APC, is saying that, look, the judge shouldn't have gone ahead to issue an ex parte order because the National Judicial Council had already kicked against the use of ex parte orders. But the thing is, are ex parte orders still in use? Yes, they are still in use. If you have an injury and you need uh, the cost to do something for you immediately, mm. they can do that. And yeah. that's the subsisting court order at the moment. And the judge was very circumspect in saying that if the details that were brought to him by the person who has been recognized is found to, those details are found to be wrong, that he'll be, uh, 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 I mean, he'll be asked to actually pay 50 50 million for bringing frivolousness. Well, this is a temporary court order. They will have to look for ways to vacate it. But for now, he, uh, I mean, Edison Ehe, who is uh, loyal to Governor Fubara, has been uh, recognized. So what this means is that Governor Fubara can go ahead and present his budget 
to this speaker. But how many numbers of the members of the State House of Assembly does this speaker, who has been recognized by the court now, control? Well, about four or five members. So what now happens to the 27 members who defected? Well, in the eyes of the law, according to uh, the other faction, that's the PDP, they are saying that, look, these 27 members, in the eyes of the law, are no longer state lawmakers. So this is the political situation we found ourselves. The only thing I can uh, say right now is that there's a subsisting court order, and that court order must be uh, either discharged or obeyed. Absolutely. It's a fine place for us to leave it. Some of the sample. Many thanks for your time as always. Thank you so much.